can you tell me your Stargate journey? How'd you get cast as Cadet Haley? Well, honestly, I was in Los Angeles and my agent called me and said, I want you to go meet Paul Weber, who cast the show. And it's actually a fun story. They sent me pages to read and they sent me a lot of pages. I remember thinking, well, I'm reading 10 pages. That's a lot for an audition for TV. And I went and all the other girls had three pages and I had 10. And so I went to meet Paul and I said, you know, I, I have a lot more scenes than anyone else. And he said, you know what, let's just read them anyway. And all I could think, no, and all I could think of was, this really reminds me of A Few Good Men. Because Cadet Haley is very, I just remember thinking, it reminds me of Tom Cruise, where he's sort of the, the underdog, but he really knows the truth. And I literally just thought, I'm just going to borrow a little bit of that energy. And I went in and we read the scene, and Paul said, that's so great, thank you. And then I got a phone call a week later saying, you're still for Stargate. I thought, that's funny. And actually, it took them 10 days to choose me because they said that I was the shortest person they had ever considered for the show. And they were worried that they couldn't fit me in the composition of the shots because I'm only five foot three and they're all tall. And when I got to set and I met Richard, he said, I want you to know that we asked them to choose you because you were so smart. And all the other girls were taller and a little bit more sporty. And, and they said, we just were really into your conviction of what you did. So I have to one day thank Rob Reiner and Tom Cruise. <laughs> I do, because I literally thought like, how? And I, I remember I met Peter Deluise, the director, who yeah. is amazing. And he, he just said like, your audition was so good. And I remember thinking, I just, I walked in and I just thought, this is, this is so few good men. Jennifer Haley has really got that conviction. And that was just all I thought. I'm sure I owe him a commission. <laughs> I and it's true. it's true to the character, you know, because she decks an upperclassman off screen, you know. Oh, no, I know. She's she's it's tired. Tough, guy. Yeah, yeah, she's tired of other people picking on this girl, and yeah. it doesn't matter her size. She lets him have it, you know. It's she one of my favorite it. scenes. They actually, just so you know. That wasn't there. They changed that for me because I was so short. They wanted to make a semi joke about my height. So they wanted to comment on my height to explain why I was in the show. And so they added that into the script so that it would justify why I was on the show and then give my character more of an edge because I was so little. They wanted to show why I would be included because they wanted my height to almost be a, a plot point. Yeah. But so that people wouldn't wonder why. So they actually added that in for me. Well, it helps define her spirit. You know, like this is this has spirit. nothing to, it is immaterial to um, what she is going to accomplish. You know, and if she has to, if she has to, to, to bloody a couple of noses to defend the people she cares she about, does. she's going to do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and I've had letters from young women who told me that they were being bullied all the time. And as soon as they saw the show, they were able to stand up for themselves. Wow. Like young girls, like 11, 12, I'm thinking, that's everything. Yeah. I know she's an awesome character. Can you tell me about that? It's, it's one of my favorite scenes from the show. Um, just who the hell do you think you are? The the uh, the dress down uh, with General Kerrigan and Major Carter. Can you tell me about that scene? Because you were on fire, and that's you that is a so? great scene. That was our first scene we shot, and I remember strongly walking in, and Peter said, "You know, we did it a couple times, and he said, it's amazing to me. Like you really are this character. I said, I don't understand why." He said because you can't even do the salute right. Cause he, he kept, cause everything on Stargate is very by the code for the army. Even the socks have to be a certain way. So he showed me, when I walked in, he said, there's a salute. And I tried to copy it. And he said, you can't even get where the hand has to hit on the head. You're such a rebel. And 
we walked in and I'm sure it was fueled by that, but I remember just thinking, she knows they're going to kick her out. And she knows, she knows that she's right. Yeah. And she knows that she has been stepped all over and she's sort of an orphan. Mm. Doesn't want to get pushed around. I also am such a fan of Silence of the Lambs and Clarice Starling. And I love in that movie how she trained with the FBI. In that show, they show scenes where she's training everyone six foot four and she's five foot two. And a lot of yeah. her work has always inspired everything that I do because she never gets pushed around. Yeah. I love the character of Clarice Starling. Yeah. So it was very much that energy of like feeling like knowing that better to be kicked out for being right than become a like someone who steps all over. Did you get the impression that she didn't really have anywhere to go were she to be kicked out? Or do you think she that she did have a home to go to? No, she's an orphan. Okay. She was an orphan and joined the military because she had no family. Okay? And she's a, a remarkable genius, which yeah. is unexpected, we find out. But she had nowhere to go. If they throw her out, where would she go? She has okay. nowhere to go. Okay. That's what I think makes her so like likable is that she has, she, but she's not, she doesn't care. Right. You know, she would just walk out. Yeah. She's not, it's not that she's invulnerable. It's that, have you ever met anyone who's so intelligent that their conviction, because they know their ideas are strong, they won't be intimidated? I know a couple of those people, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I mean, literally, two people. I mean, I love the Maverick energy, and I love Clarice Strolling so much. And that archetype is so important. I never wanted, because people in the military usually have families. They're in the military. She somehow ended up there. She has nowhere to go. Yeah. Her mind is her only treasure, really. She knows she's out on her ass. That's what I like about her. Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.